Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. I am Marisa Cunningham, your Tampa Bay Realtor. And today we are on day six of the 12 Days of Home Ownership series. Today we are going to discuss overcoming and dealing with obstacles during the home buying process. And a lot of these are very common uh, because a lot of the clients that I have worked with, they you know, they discuss some of the things that have discouraged them um, in the past from trying to get a home. And, you know, I just wanted to, you know, talk about it and give you uh, solutions on to how to overcome some of these obstacles. So um, the first one and the most thing that affects most people is your credit. So people are like, I can't get a house because my credit is really messed up. Now, they are programs where you can, your credit score could be as low as 580, your FICO credit score, um, and it really depends on the lender and it depends on the type of loan that you get. Um, usually, FHA loans are a lot more um, lenient, whereas conventional loans, they start at around 620, sometimes 640. If you do have credit issues, I always suggest that you get credit, invest in credit restoration um, services. I have my lender partner where if he uh, tries to get someone pre-approved and there are issues, make sure you ask your lender what is the issue. Where can you make your improvements for your credit? Because sometimes it could be something as small as having an old, outdated um uh, something that's on your credit report um, that can be deleted. Sometimes you have inaccurate information. It could be something as small as paying off one credit card. You know, always ask the lender if they say that you are not approved. Ask them why and ask them how can you get approved? What steps do you need to take? Another obstacle some people deal with is low income. Now, of course, you can always try to get a second job. Um, try to bring in more income. You can always ask for a co-signer. Um, I'm not, you know, it really depends on how you are with your family and friends uh, to ask for a co-signer, but that is an option. Um, there are also USDA low-income loans that are available for rural areas. Um, there's also state and local government programs that um, cater to those that are um, in service. So that would be like teachers, firefighters, nurses, those type of jobs. Um, another issue that people are having is rising home prices. Now this is very common and I know this is in a lot of metropolitan areas. The prices of homes have skyrocketed as much as 45% in the last five years. Um, one of the things that I deal with when I'm working with some of my clients is they're approved for, let's say, up to 200000 and the homes that are within that price range, they are not liking it. They have always tell people sometimes that they have, um, you know, caviar taste but they're on like a Denny's uh, budget <laughs> so you know those things are it's a reality it happens um, if you find that you are not finding a home that you like in your price range I always tell people to go back reevaluate what you need what is a necessity what can you live without sometimes it could be that extra bedroom that extra bathroom you know, so you might even have to change your neighborhood or move, look further out from your desired area um, where you might have a longer commute. That can also um, help look seeing uh, cheaper price homes. Um, you can look into foreclosure homes and also fixer uppers. So there's other options out there. Uh, sometimes you have to tweak uh, your criteria a little bit. Another issue would be saving for a down payment. So most people say, oh, well, I don't have 20% to put down, you know, for my down payment. And that is not the case anymore. That used to be back in the day. But now, 20% um, 
20% is not required. Maybe if you have, you know, a second home or an investment property it requires that. But for your first home, uh, FHA loans now are requiring like as low as 3% down. And if you are, um, are eligible to get a VA loan, that's 0% down. So that is also another option. I always tell people to save. Save regardless. Um, because not only are you going to be saving for a down payment, you need to save for your closing costs. So I always try to differentiate. Those are two different pots. Um, your closing costs is what's going to be required once you get to the closing table. So it's going to be a lot of, you know, your fees that was charged for the lender, a lot of prepayments for taxes and insurance and things of that nature. Those are going to be uh, also required. So you have to not only save for a down payment, but save for your closing costs. Another way to overcome those is to get down payment assistance. There are a lot of county programs, state programs, and also city programs. Um, so that is also an option. And if you're having a problem with your closing costs, I always tell my clients to ask the seller um, to contribute to their closing costs. Um, closing costs usually run about 6%. So I always say, hey, can you pay, at, if not all of it, can you pay half? Can you contribute half towards my closing costs? Another obstacle people face is their offer being turned down. Now, this can happen if you're in a multiple offer situation or if they were just not uh, satisfied with your offer price. Now, one of the things that I always suggest is your realtor needs to be able to negotiate. So they would have sometimes if they are going to um, turn your offer away, um, you can ask, you know, why and try to come to an agreement. There might be another reason is too many things on your inspection report and your home didn't appraise. So I just wanted to go over some of the things that you can deal with overcoming obstacles. If you have any questions or concerns, leave your comments below. Check out my home buyers and my